And a pleasant good evening uh, to you and yours, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network. Alan Slaughterzinski with you live from O'Galley High School, where tonight we got a pretty good softball battle on tap for you between the 9-4 and four O'Galley Commodores and the 7-3 and three Satellite Scorpions. Tonight's game is brought to you by Kendall Signs. Design, fabric, and installation, the best in the business. Call Kendall Signs. EG Kicks for the best in Nike tennis shoes. Check out EG Kicks on Instagram, on IG at EG Kicks. Tonight's event is also brought to you by the Marcus May Foundation Golf Outing coming up May the 6th at the Duran Country Club or I'm sorry, yeah, the Duran Golf Club, I should say, uh, in Vieira. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Best Private Investigations as the two teams get set to take the field. What's up, my, my, my man? How you doing, buddy? We have got a team that is back from a tournament and a team that, uh, I'll tell you what, both of these teams are playing well to start the season. Uh, let's talk about the home team, O'Galley. Commodores this year coming in batting 338 as a team with an OBP of 439 and a slugging percentage of 442. Feeling the ball pretty good too at a 926 clip. So uh, we've seen the Commodores twice this season. They're one and one here on Brevard Sports Network. They lost a heartbreaker to the Melbourne Bulldogs and won a uh, tight affair against. The Vieira Hawks. Uh, as for Satellite, they come in. I don't have their team stats per se, but when you look at what they have in terms of hitters, they've got one, two, three players batting over 400 and two more at 350 or better. They are led at the plate by number 13, senior Kate Smith, who's batting 440 this year, and Kate Smith has quite a story, and we're going to tell you about that coming up here in just a little bit as we get set here coming up for the National Anthem. In the circles tonight, it's going to be number 7, Heather Rue for O'Galley, and number 45, Mallory Hines for Satellite. We'll start with Rue, since she's going to be in the circle first. She's having a great year this season. She is 3-1 uh, th and one with a 0 0.24 ERA. This is her sixth appearance of the year, her third game start in National Anthem. Hello, Space Coast. Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your support of BSN and allowing us to cover your student athletes and come into your home each and every night. Give us a follow on Facebook at Brevard Sports Network, and here's the many more years of top-notch sports coverage right here in Brevard County. Thanks again. All right, we're ready to play ball here. We were telling you about uh, Rue, number seven, Heather Rue, in the circle tonight for the O'Galley Commodore. She is 3-1 and one this year. This is her sixth appearance, third start. She's got a complete game and a save this year. Rue has pitched 29 innings. She's allowed 21 hits. She has struck out 28, walked six, and faced 110 batters. 
122, but 110 officially. Now, let's give you the starting lineup for the Satellite Scorpions. Leading off and playing right field is going to be number 13, Kate Smith, batting second and playing second base and wearing Number two is going to be McKenna Roberts. Batting third, playing left field. Number 12, Michaela Gaskins. Batting fourth and playing the hot corner tonight. Number 23, Isabel Barrera, freshman. And batting fifth and playing shortstop is number five, Jadalyn Johan. Batting sixth and doing the catching tonight is number four, Megan McCormick. Batting seventh and playing first base is number seven, Phoenix Lynn, batting eighth and playing center field, number 15, Amelia Tosi, and batting ninth and in the circle for the Scorps tonight, number 45, sophomore, Mallory Hines. Let's take you around the O'Galley Commodore infield. As we said, Rue is in the circle. Langley behind the plate from third to first. It'll be Cabral, Turco, Squibb, and Barrera. And from left to right in the outfield, Brown, Odell, and Gamble. And we are set for action here in the top of the first. Your umpires for tonight's game in the field is Sam Hall. And behind the plate is Buster Popovich. As Rue steps in. to face Kate Smith. Now, the unbelievable thing about Kate Smith is she has just one arm. It is a birth defect. She was born with just one arm. She swings the bat with her right arm, bats left-handed, and I tell you what, that's a great bunt. Stumbles a bit out of the box, throw down to first, in time, nice play behind the plate by Langley down to Barrera. But uh, I was going to tell you, she leads the team batting 440 this year. You'll see her up close and personal, too, because she plays right field right where our camera is located. Batting second for Satellite is number two, McKenna Roberts. And McKenna will take a strike. McKenna this year is batting 433. She's got 13 hits for Coach Tom Fadol, the FACA Hall of Famer. And she goes to square the bunt. And it's fouled off for strike two. Coach Fadol, of course, legendary in the softball community and his state championships. We'll tell you about those coming up. Pitch low for a ball. This is Coach Fadul's second year, and in his first year, he was named co-manager of the year with Dan Adele Low. Oh, actually, a hitter. Hit her on the foot. So that's going to be an HBP, and Roberts will take first. And that's going to bring up Gaskins, Michaela Gaskins. Gaskins comes in as a 400 hitter. Over at Pembroke Pines, won more than 400 games. State championships did Tom Fadul. Took over the Scorps program last year. So Satellite won out here in the top of the first. Runner at first. Is Roberts as Gaskins steps in. Rue takes a peek over. She rocks, kicks, and fires. That gets away and down the second base easily in the scoring position. Goes Roberts. Gaskins with an 1152 OPS this year. She also leads the Scorps in RBIs with 12. And there's another one out there for her, which would give Satellite an early lead. And that one is pure smoke. And it's a ball and a strike from Rue. So 
Squares the bunt. It's high. She reached for it, fouls it off. And that one just kept going and going and going. And it'll now be a ball and two strikes to Gaskins. Barrera is on deck. Pitch swung on, and umpire says foul tip. Swung on and missed, but the ball gets away. Down to third base goes Roberts, and taking first on the strikeout is Gaskin, so now runners at the corner. You done already? Why? You better do something about that, boy. First and third pitch. That's a strike. And down to second base and taking the base on a catcher's indifference is Gaskins as Isabel's Barrera, freshman, stands in from the right side of the dish. Second and third, just one out here. And that ball swung on and fouled off the screen. And it's one ball and two strikes now. Once again, we'd like to thank Kendall Signs, 3216365116. Swung on and missed, and a big strikeout from Rue for the second out in the inning. And that'll bring up Jadalyn Johan, the senior. And she comes in batting 290 this year. She's got nine hits on the season and there's two RBIs out there for her. and she checks up for ball one one and oh here in the top of inning number one between the Scorps and the Commodores O'Galley has won 12 of 14 matches against Satellite. In fact, the last time Satellite won a game against O'Galley on the softball diamond was 2013. That ball is high, and it's 2-0. and oh. The on-deck hitter is McCormick, Megan McCormick. So that would be 10 years ago. Here's the pitch. Low. Ball three. So Rue has gone to 3-0. and oh. On Johan. That's a strike right down O'Galley Boulevard. And it's three and one now. Three balls, one strike, two outs, two on here. No score, top one. Strike two, or that's actually strike three. My bad. So that will end the inning. Four batter, five batters to the plate. No runs, no hits. One error, two left. We head to the bottom of inning number one. No score.
All right, welcome back here to O'Galley, where the Scorp Strand 2 in the top of the first. Let's take you through the starting lineup for the O'Galley Commodores. Leading off is going to be Heather Rue batting second. It's going to be Ainsley O'Dell batting third. Is going to be number 19, Emma Cabral batting fourth. It's going to be number 16, Isabel Gamble. Batting fifth is going to be number 13, Jordan Stout. Batting fifth is going to be Turco, the shortstop, Deborah Turco. Batting seventh is going to be number six, Gabrielle Barrera. Batting seventh is going to be the catcher, number 12, Sarah Langley. Batting eighth is going to be Nicole Brown. And the flex player tonight is number four, Emma Squibb. And we'll take you around the satellite. That's a strike from Mallory Hines. Hines so far this year, seven and three for the Scorps. And that change up is a butte, but it is off the plate. Hines. There's a ground ball shot through the middle. And Rue leads off with a single. And we'll likely get a courtesy runner for the pitcher, maybe. We'll see. But Hines, as we said, 7-3 and three this year. She has 60 strikeouts, 65 hits. She's walked 16, giving up 35 earned runs. And this will bring up Odell. Ainsley Odell. So far this season, batting 375 for Coach Gabe Carrod. Mallory Hines, 1 and 0. Oh. That's a nice bunt, but it hit the batter. And the count is 1 and 1. And the 1-1 one, one coming from Mallory. That ball is and caught by Kate Smith in right. And that is one out. Smith with a good, good track on that one there for the first out. That ball got right on top of her fast. And she was there for it as... Cabral steps in so far this season. Cabral, 462 hitter. Incredible. Pitch. Is high. Two and zero oh. to the junior, who's batting four sixty two, low. Four ball three. So far this season, she's got three RBIs, two doubles. That's tied with tied for second with three other players. Langley leads the team with three of them this year. Pitch low for ball four. Cabral draws a one-out walk. Rue will head to second. And Isabel Gamble will step in. Freshman. Gamble batting 583 this year. And 12 official at-bats. She's got seven hits. And she is second on the team with seven RBIs. And they go for the steal at third. And what does? He says safe. Gets under the tag there. So Rue takes third on a stolen base. 
And down the second goes Kerbal. And now first base wide open for Gamble, but as Satellite had in the first inning, runners at second and third with just one out. And that is a ball, so it's 2-0. and oh. Fouled back to the screen, and the count remains a hitter's count at two and one. Two balls and one strike. The on-deck hitter is Jordan Stout. Hines winds, kicks, and fires. Strike. They must be forgetting to put the second strike up. I don't know where I'm missing it, but that's strike three and two outs. As Stout steps in. Stout batting 353 this year. She also has two doubles and three RBIs. And that is ball one, one and oh to Stout. So now two outs, identical first inning situations for both teams, second and third. Willow Galley cash in. The changeup is perfect, and it's one and one. Deborah Turco would be next. That changeup bounces in the dirt, and it's two balls and one strike. That ball is lofted but hauled in by Joe Hand, the shortstop for the third and final out of the inning. And just as the Scorps did, they send five batters to the plate. They uh, leave runners stranded at second and third. No runs on one hit, no errors, two left. We head to the top of the second, no score. I'll take care of it. All right, welcome back here. Alan Slaughterzinski with you here tonight, live from Commodore Stadium, where it's no score heading into the top of the second. I think I put T next to the two. And it's going to be McCormick, Lynn, and Tosi stepping in to face Rue, and that's going to be a strike, nothing and one to McCormick. McCormick, a 231 batter on the season. That went low. So I'd like to thank O'Galley Kicks, available only on Instagram, the IG address, at EG Kicks. We've got those vintage Nikes that so many are after these days. Especially, uh, it's going to be a hot commodity coming up with the new movie, coming out set to be released the first week in April called Air with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck about how Knight courted Mike Jordan back in the days and that's swung on and missed for the third strikeout of the night for Rue and this is going to bring up number seven Phoenix Lynn one out here 
Lynn batting 375 this year. She's got nine hits for Coach Fadul and the Scorps. And Rue has found a groove. That's strike one. She dropped it down and tried to lay it down, but that did not work. And it is strike two. The on-deck hitter is Tosi, center fielder. Coach Gabe Carrad calling out. Pitch signals to Rue. That one is sort of not even sure what it was. I just knew it didn't hit the ground, and Rue caught it. One, uh, two outs. Kind of floated off the bat. Kind of tipped to the pitcher is basically what that was. And Tosi will step in. For Satellite, two outs already here. And she squares the bunt. Tosi, a 250 hitter this year. She got two hits. She does have two RBIs, so she's got some big hits. Swung on and missed. Strike two. So Rue is one pitch away from a very quick top of the second inning. She winds, fires. Strike three called. And that's three up, three down, and a quick ending to the top of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors. Back with the bottom of the second here on BSN. Turco, Barrera, and Langley do up here in the bottom of the second inning. No score here. A relatively easy inning for Miss Heather Rue that last inning. And once again, around the horn for the Scorps. It's Gaskins, Tosi, and Smith from left to right. From third to first, it's Barrera, Johan, Roberts, and Lynn. And in the circle, Mallory Hines. And behind the plate is McCormick. And Deborah Turco, one of the better fielding shortstops in Brevard County. Pretty good hitter, too. She's batting 333 in nine games this year. 24 official at bat. She's got eight hits. She leads the O'Galley Commodores with 11 RBIs. Double and a triple for Deborah this year. And this one is hit into left field. And the left fielder started in. And it goes over her head. And Turco will stop at second with a lead off double here in the bottom of the second. That's not an error. And Deborah Turco. With her second double this year. And that's going to bring up. Number six. Gabrielle Barrera. Gabby squares the bunt. Gabby this year batting 176. Two doubles, two RBIs, three hits in 17 at-bats. Off to a slow start, but Gabby's a good hitter. She'll get it turned around. And Hines, that's a strike. Nice pitch from Mallory. Nice angle, Caleb. Good job, bud. Looks good right there. 
0-2 from Hines. And that's shot into stop, though. And you know what? Oh, he calls Sam Hall. Calls her out. And I tell you what, what a play by Roberts at second base. That's stop. First of all, it saves a run because Turco's got to stop at third. And then she gets the out at first. Great play. Whether you agree or disagree with the call, it's a great play. And... And Caleb confirms on our replay it was close, but a great call by Sam Hall. She was out. So a good play there all the way around. By McKenna Roberts. And this is Sarah Langley, the catcher. And Sarah this year. 208. She's got five RBIs though. So she's she drives in runs. She's got an opportunity here with one out. And Turco at third. And this one's gonna get through. And Turco scores the first O'Galley run. And Langley will pick up RBI number six in the leadoff double. Cash is in as Langley. With a base hit as Nicole Brown will step in. And we're coming in to run is Kendra Walden, number 18, the sophomore. As Brown steps in, 263 hitter this year. She's got two RBIs. And Walden at first. That's a nice, beautiful bunt right back to the pitcher. No play. And on her way to third goes Walden with a heads-up run. How about the play by Walden there and a base hit bunt by Brown as the Commodores in business with runners at the corner and just one out. And the play was on there. How are you not getting her in your shot? Her, standing right there. Oh. That's a strike from Hines. That's one of her better pitches of the night. One ball, one strike. We are back to the top of the lineup again with Rue. Rue, her first time up. Singled and stole a base. Hines, high, ball two. So the Commodores for the second consecutive inning have runners at second and third with a one out. They also have cashed in with a run this inning. Rue is... The fifth batter of the inning, the on-deck hitter is Odell, Ainsley Odell. High, ball three, three and one now. Not a good spot to be. You don't want to load the bases with the heart of the Commodore lineup coming up. And that's ball four. And this is going to cost them a run. And sliding safely home on the errant throwback. Langley scores. Brown goes to third. Rue takes second on the walk following the throw, and it's still second and third now with two runs in. That's an error. Anytime a run scores, that's an error on a throwback to the pitcher. And Coach Fadul wants to talk to his lady Scorps here. And the batter is Ainsley Odell, who flied out her last time up to the right fielder.
<laughs> you see that? And you say the uh, – you're saying that the – on the replay she was out? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. It was close, right. All right, second and third, one out here with Ainsley Odell up. And Mallory Hines rocks, kicks, fires, and Ainsley looks at strike one. A little more on the catcher and the umpire if you can. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, that's perfect. Sun goes down quick, don't it? Yeah, you ain't kidding. That's strike two. Great pitch from Hines following the visit by Coach Fadul. So nothing and two with one out and runners at first and second. Cabral on deck. There's a shot back up the middle. That's going to score two more Commodores on an RBI single by Ainsley Odell. And it's four, nothing, O'Galley. For Ainsley Odell, that is our, that, that's her first two RBIs this year. 375 hitter gets her first two runs driven in, and the first pitch offering to Cabral is swung on and missed for strike one, 0-1. The change up is bounces. I like that angle. Swung on and missed strike two. We got to keep remembering to pack the thing. They got a metal fence here. Unbelievable. One and two. Might as well just throw it in the car and leave it there. Popped up, and it's going to come right into your living room as Phoenix Lynn grabs it for out number two, and a much-needed out, I might add, for Satellite as Gamble will step in now. Gamble the last time up. Struck out. So Ainsley Odell at first, two outs now with Gamble at the dish. Pitch fouled back and off of Caleb's car, 0 and 1. I figure if I say that, I will remove the jinx. Because we're bound to get it one day. The 0 1 bounces. And it's one and one. Mallory's got good command of that fastball. There's no saying in baseball. You throw what's working. Right now, that changeup just isn't working for her. I'd keep coming with that fastball. One ball and one strike to Gamble. There's a fastball at the knees. The count moves to two and one. Yeah, locate your pitches, but two and one as Hines rocks, kicks, fires. There's a chopper to the shortstop. Tough play up and over to first. Hey, he got, yeah, they got her. That's a good play. That is a good play by Johan there for the third and final out. But not before the O'Galley Commodores get three hits, four runs. One air, one left, and we head to the top of the third. Commodores on top for nothing.
It'll be Hines, Smith, and Roberts, 9-1-2 for the Scorps. We've got some work to do here in the top of the third inning. Hines, a 250 hitter to go along with her duties in the circle. She's got two RBIs this year. She scored a run, three walks, only struck out once and collected three hits this season. So an opportunity here to help herself as Mallory Hines steps in her final inning with EG Kicks. Final half inning, I should say, with EG Kicks. I want to thank EG Kicks. And again, it's about to become real popular with the movie Air coming out because he's going to have those vintage Jordans that everybody's going to be after once that movie was released. Pitch, and that is nothing but a strike. Oh, and one. I bet soccer and basketball thought we forgot about them. We have not. Our players of the year will be next week. Pitch, changeup is perfect. Fouled off and back to the screen, and the count is O oh and two. Beautiful night, man. And Absolutely beautiful night for anything outdoors. The 0-2, and Hines stays alive. Four to nothing here for O'Galley. There you see it on the Kendall Sign scoreboard at the top of the screen. Hines stays alive again. We got all kind of stuff coming up tomorrow on Brevard Sports Network. My goodness gracious. Stay tuned. Pitch. And that's a butte from Rue to get her counterpart, Hines, one out. Rue's fifth. Of the night. Back to the top of the lineup with Kate Smith stepping in. That is the 33rd strikeout of the year for Rue. Simply incredible. I what what an inspirational story to see Kate Smith in there swinging away with her right arm. This was this was something she was born when she was born without her left arm. There's the pitch. Oh, that hit her or hit the bat? Hit the bat, and it's O and two. The O two from Rue to Smith. Outside, ball one, one and two. And there's a little slapper, but caught for out number one. Who caught that? Number 17, that was uh, not sure who that was. Was that Rue? Yeah, I'm going to give it to Rue. Ground ball to the third baseman. Oh, she airmailed it off the fence here. And down to second base goes Roberts. On the E5, and Satellite's in business with two outs here. Well, I think it was. Now I'm bothered by this. I won't settle until I get a new third baseman, and I don't know who she is. 
And there is a shot to left field, but hauled in for the third and final out of the inning by Brown. So no runs, no hits, one error, one left. We head to the bottom of the third, four to nothing, O'Galley. It's Emma Cabral. I got her listed as 19, and she's number 17. So uh, let's do uh, – let's go back to Kendall Signs. And then uh, next half inning, best private investigations. Bottom of the third inning. And due up for the Commodores will be Stout, Turco, and Barrera. Yeah, just put them up now. If you got them. It's hard to believe, but the NCAA tournament kicks off again tomorrow. First pitch offering from Hines to Stout is swung on and fouled into the dirt. I'd like to thank Best Private Investigations. Three two one five zero eight four four nine two. O and two to Stout. Change up is fouled off and out of play. Stout, the designated hitter tonight, her first time up. She popped out to the shortstop. Stout has the only Commodore home run this year, and Hines drops in a beautiful changeup for strike three. Bring it up, Deborah Turco, who let off a four-run second with a double. Turco has doubled in the game. She's one for one and scored a run. That change up. Hines has found that change up this inning as she drops that in for strike one. And the fastball is swung on and fouled back to the screen. And Turco is going to have to battle now as she sits in an 0 2 hole. How about that World Baseball Classic? The 0-2, that one just a little bit high. They came out in Japan. 96% of televisions in the country were tuned in. 96% of the TVs in Japan were tuned in. That is incredible. And it's the next day there. The 1-2, and there's a shot. Underneath the shortstop's glove. And that's an error. And Turco reaches with one out. Bring it up. Barrera. Gabby Barrera. Gabby was out on a what Satellite thought was a controversial play her last time up on a ground out to the, sh to the second baseman. As that is a strike, but our replay showed she was out. Yeah. 
pitch. And that one is lofted in the right field. And there to back up. And we got a new right fielder, too. Our new right fielder is going to be Michaela Gaskins. And moving over to center field is going to be Kate Smith moves to center. Low for a ball two and two. Who's in left? Gaskins has moved over here. Let's we'll see who's in left now. Pitch from Hines. The changeup is high, and the count is full now at three and two. The full count pitch coming from Hines. Is ball four. And Turco down the second, and Langley will step up. She singled her last time up. Driving in, Turco. So first and second with one out here. Hines is high with the fastball, 1-0. and oh. That ball is, that's a looper. That's trouble. It falls if Satellite hurries. Unfortunately, the speed a little too much, and that looping single by Langley now has the bases loaded with just one out, and Nicole Brown coming to the plate. Brown singled her last time up and drove in a run. Or actually, I'm sorry, she didn't drive in a run. She scored eventually on the single by Odell. That one is lifted into right. It's going to fall. Two O'Galley runs will score around third. Stopping at third is going to be Langley. And there's two more as Turco and Barrera cross the plate. And it's 6 nothing Commodores. On the double down the line by Brown, and she's two for two tonight. And picks up two RBIs there. And we go back to the top of the lineup with Heather Rue. And Rue looks at strike one. So, Galley putting them where they ain't right now, Caleb. Good hitting. That ball is lifted. Trouble, but Smith is there. She corrals it in, and the throw, that's a butte by Smith there. She catches it, flexes, why not? And she keeps Langley at third on the tag, and that's going to bring up Ainsley Odell, who singled last time up and drove in a couple runs. She's got two out there now. High ball one. The pitch popped up, playable, and calling for it is McKenna Roberts, and she hauls it in for the third and final out, but not before the Commodores pick up two more. They get two runs on three hits, one error, two left. We head to the top of the fourth inning, 6 nothing O'Galley.
Coming up on May the 6th, it's the Marcus May Foundation Golf Outing. And uh, the information is there on the screen and will also be on the bottom of the screen throughout this inning here coming up. I'm set to interview Marcus coming up again on Friday as we go to the top of the fourth inning. And for the Scorps, it'll be Barrera, Johan, and McCormick, I believe. Rue, one and one to Barrera, who struck out her first time up. Pitch, there's a strike at the knees, one and two. The information for the Marcus May Foundation golf outing on the bottom of the screen. I want to thank Marcus. The one-two from Maru is inside. We're even up at two balls and two strikes. Swung on and missed. Strike three. And that's going to bring up Jalen Johan. She struck out her first time up. The sixth strikeout of the night, the 34th of the year for Heather. Whatever orange 14 is is what's coming. She turns. Good bunt. Nice play. By Cabral over to Barrera for out number two on the bunt. As Megan McCormick steps in. Two quick outs. Only one, only one, one, two, three inning, and that occurred back in the second when Rue struck out two of the three batters she faced. As McCormick steps in, and she was one of the three she struck out. I said Heather, Megan McCormick. It's Heather Rue and Megan McCormick. My apologies. That's a strike. And Rue quickly has McCormick in an 0-2 hole here with two outs. So a color and a number coming here is the pitch. Strike three. That's a butte. And that'll end the inning. Three up, three down. As Rue on the changeup gets McCormick. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Six nothing Commodores. Commodores with six runs in this game so far have hit the 100 plateau for the season. They've scored 100 runs and given up just 34. That's a plus 66 run differential. Uh, satellite, not bad either. They get 78 runs and 53. That's a plus 25 for the Scorp. So O'Galley has hit 100 runs. Yep, keeping it 100. <laughs> Seven runs a game. Yes, I did the math all by myself, Caleb. 
I know, bro. I know. It was a weird bird that just flew over. And the pitch to Cabral, who has walked and flied out, popped out, I should say, to the first baseman, is ball one from Mallory Hines. And that is fouled back to the screen. And the count moves to a ball and a strike. Swung on and missed for strike two. It's a good piece of high heat there thrown by Hines. I'm not sure how many balls there are, but there are at least two. <laughs> two and two for sure. Pitch. That, you know what? That is probably one of the best swings of the night you'll see. That's how you battle with two strikes right there. And this is actually Kendra Walden at the dish. So it's Kendra Walden has come in to hit. And that's it. That's outstanding for a sophomore. And Hines does come back to get her. But impressive nonetheless for out number one. As Gamble will step in. Because I can tell you, that is not easy to do to start and then stop your swing and then make contact. Ted Williams used to actually practice that. Yeah, he did. One and O. Oh. That's why he's the greatest hitter of all time. That's perfect. One and one. That one is like the EFIS pitch. You know what the EFIS pitch is? Well, young man, you're going to have to Google that. You're going to need to, you got a phone right there, so between innings, Google EFIS pitch. That's what that one reminded me of. That one gets away from Mallory a little bit, and it's two and one to Gamble, and that ball is popped up, and that will get just out of play. Six nothing Commodores on top. Four in the second. Two in the third. So far, one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Low, ball three. Three and two now. Two gamble. Stout is on deck. There's a hard ground ball. Nice job by jo jo Johan. And up and over to first for the outs. He stayed down on that one, gobbled it up. And made the nice throw over to Phoenix for out number two. Swung on and missed as this is Emma Squibb, who was playing second base and has now stepped in to bat for Stout. Hines 
One and one to Emma. Foul tipped. And the count moves to a ball and two strikes. Well, I guess we got an opening Friday night, huh? High ball two, two and two. So, believe it or not, this is the actual first deuces wild situation of the night. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And the turn card pitch coming from Hines to Squib. Strike three and throws, and she's safe. Nice hustle by Squib, but a strikeout credited to Hines. And Deborah Turco will step in. Turco's had a night. She reached on a double, scored, an error, and scored. Yeah. Turco now has scored 11 runs this year for O'Galley. And there's a hard ground ball to the second baseman. Oh, it gets away. I think she was safe anyway. That was a great jump by Squib. I believe she was going to be safe anyway, Caleb. Yeah, she was safe. She was coming up. So that's going to be a hit. Actually, that's a fielder's choice. And this brings up Barrera. And runners now at first and second with two outs. Barrera tonight. Grounded out to the second baseman and walked and scored. Hines, that one is fouled off the hands and out of play. And the count is one and one. Caleb's going to deliver you inning number five. Got to take my fifth inning stretch. And due up for satellite in the fifth will be Lind Tosi scheduled and Mallory Hines. Hi. Two and one. Low, ball three, three and one. That's a strike. Yeah, that's a strike. And and you know what? That's a good call by Buster Popovich. And he thought about it for a minute, and he said, "Yeah, that's a strike." And I and I like that. I you know I know that agitates some fans and players and managers, but he took a second to think about that, and he got it right. And there's a shot to the second baseman up and over to first for the third and final out of the inning. This time, the Scorps. Leave the runner stranded, uh, or O'Galley leaves the runner stranded as we head to the bottom of inning or top of inning number five, and it's six nothing.
All right, folks, here we are, bottom or top of the fifth inning. Lynn, Phoenix Lynn, the senior, here to start the fifth inning for the Scorpions. First pitch, and it will be a dribbler up the third baseline, and it will go foul. 0-1-1. Claire Michaels, watching from Connecticut. Go Scorps. That one in there for strike two. And quickly 0-2. Swing and a miss for strike number three. Amelia Tosi. Up to the plate for the Scorpions. Check that. Who, who's at the dish? That's not Tosi. In there for strike one, that's actually number six, Madison Clark. And Clark takes the first pitch strike. One out. Clark swing and a miss for strike two. Count is 0-2, one out. That one in there for strike three and three pitches to account for out number two. That's gonna be, it's gonna be a backwards K. Next up, Megan McCormick. Nope. Check that, Mallory Hines. She'll take strike one. Commodore's up. Six, six to nothing, Hines last time up. Struck out. And quickly down, 0 and 2. Two outs, nobody on. Comes and delivers. That one will be popped up and nearly hits me in my fat head. If we didn't have the roof, that is. But the dugout protected me. Count is still 0 and 2, two outs. And Rue, one strike away. Asked for a look from first base. Said she did not go, and it is ball one. Hines looking to battle here. Comes to, and still staying alive. Rue looks, the one, two pitch. That one fouled off and out of play. Last three pitches.
Still 1-2. Rue delivers. In there for strike three, and that is a 1-2-3 inning for Rue. With the backwards K, we head to the bottom of inning number five with your score. Six nothing, O'Galley on top. All right, we start off inning. Or we start off the bottom of the fifth. Sarah Langley for the Commodores coming up to bat. Last time up, she had a single. And that ball is... Bounces off the bottom of the fence in foul territory. 0-1. Again, Langley had a single last time up. Pitch, and that one she'll take straight in the back. And an H HBP. Next up in the lineup is Nicole Brown. Brown comes to the plate. Looks at a high ball one. Langley trying to play a little gamesmanship there. Last time Brown was up. Brown hit a single. And there's a beautifully laid bunt. Down the first baseline, no throw to be made. Heads up, base running by Langley. And there are runners on the corners, first and third, with nobody out here to start the fifth, bottom of the fifth. Beautiful job. Another bunt attempt and the play is on, and Nicole Brown heads over to second on the steal. Emma Squibb at the dish for the Commodores. Runners now on second and third, no outs. Two count is two and zero. Oh. Dishes, that one's in the dirt. And Lang Sarah Langley comes in to score. And over to third will go Nicole Brown. Three zero count. That one in there for strike one. Count is three and one. We'll change the scoreboard here in just a second. 
It is seven to zero. That one in the dirt. And Nicole Brown will come in to score. Uh, I'll change it after this set bat. Nope, right here. It's now eight nothing O'Galley. And a stolen base. Pitch in the dirt for ball one. So squib. At second. And there's a shot over to the second baseman. Over to first. And she's safe. Dropped it. So, that was O'Neill or Odell. Runners on the corners. That one low for ball one. And another steal. And Odell will take second on the steal. Currently at the plate. Ah. That one is low. That is high, and that will load the bases for Odell, or uh, Cabal. Next up is Gamble. Gabriella. Oh, one six. one six, ha ha. I Isabel Gamble. Galley here having a uh, really productive inning. Watching from Connecticut. Bases loaded, still nobody out. This is a really precarious spot. Base hit wins it. The pitch, that one high for ball one. They, they skipped her, they, they, they skipped her and went straight to Odell. And over to third. A home for one run win. And there's two runs. That will do it. So O'Galley scores four runs in the fifth. To end this one, your, your winning pitcher tonight, Heather Rue. Your losing pitcher tonight is Mallory Hines. 
Commodores move to 10 and 4. And the, and the Scorpions will fall to 9-4. and four. like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. I'd like to thank uh, Athletic Director Todd O's. Alan, I'm Caleb Brown. Have a great night. Again, your final score, the O'Galley Commodores 10, Satellite Scorpions 0. Have a great night, everybody.